In this film study, we're going to take a look at the 2019 Texas Tech defense. The defense that was number one all time historically, according to Ken Palm, defensive efficiency. And this is a Texas Tech team that lost in the national championship game to University of Virginia. And when I was watching film and doing this film study, there were three things that really jumped out at me that I want to point out before we dive in. And these are three C words, where the first C is they compete. A lot of teams or some teams play hard and then the special teams they compete and there's a big difference in competing and playing hard and I think you'll see that right away they take great pride they take great pride in their effort they take great pride as individuals and as a collective unit in their defense the second C is they communicate now you're not going to hear this much on film but it's obvious they switch a lot rotation scramble the communication is on point which all great defenses do and Texas Tech does that well and then the third C is clarity there is high clarity in their mission and what they're trying to do. They want to get the ball out of the middle. They want to force that to the sideline. They switch a lot. They rotate early. They rotate loud and aggressively, and they do it at a high level. And a lot of teams, when they play defense, they're reactionary. They just react to whatever the defense does. And I often say that great defenses and great defensive players, they play offensive. They have an offensive mindset on the defensive end. They make the other offense do what they want them to do on defense. They put the ball where they want it, they force it where they want, and they take them out of what they want to do. And Texas Tech does that at a high level. So again, as we dive in, those three C words, compete, communication, and clarity, I think you'll see that jump off the film here. And as we dive into this film, we're really going to just look at four opponents that they played in the later stages of the NCAA tournament. Michigan in the Sweet 16, Gonzaga in the Elite Eight, Michigan State in the Final Four, and then Virginia in the National Championship. And these four opponents, they were all four top 25 in the country in their offensive efficiency. Michigan was number 24. Gonzaga was number one in the country this year where they played in the lead eight. And then Michigan State was five and Virginia was two. So three of these four opponents on film were top five in the country in offense. So these aren't bad offenses. These are really high level, top notch offenses you're seeing them compete against. So here we go and let's dive into the film. So as we play this first clip here against Michigan State, going to let the audio play and you're going to hear Bill Raftery and Grant Hill on the call and just talking a little bit about their desire to play defense. You hear it right out of the rip. So let's let it play. So you hear there Grant Hill saying they enjoy playing defense. You see it as you watch them play. You know this is a huge point of emphasis their coaching staff has with them in their defense. They get down the stance. They move. They're ready. Their off-ball defenders are ready. As you see here, they really like to switch everything. That's their MO. They switch everything, and we'll talk as the film plays about some of the value in switching, where that can hurt you at times, but for them, it, it plays really well. Now, right there, Michigan State does get a, a really good shot. But let's run it from the beginning again here. They stay in the bubble. They're active. Look at their stance. They, they keep active hands. They're trying to disrupt the ball here. There you see a ball screen with the switch. They're trying to take advantage in the post. And we just roll it back. So right here, really good job, Texas Tech defender right here, just fighting around and fronting. A lot of players in this situation, they would play behind and let it easy. No, they fight. They're going to make you throw the lob and provide weak side support. They got Jarrett Culver, who was a first-round NBA pick, here on the backside helping on any lob pass over the top. See, Michigan State's trying to get it to them. It can somewhat stall their offense at times, which we'll talk about as it goes as well. Again, they allow middle penetration, which they don't love. Again, Michigan State gets a pretty good shot there, but they miss it. Again, we'll keep it running here. There's another ball screen, another switch, and they just keep fighting right here. Their point guard in the post. He's not making it easy. Then they get another switch. They get a bigger defender on him, and then you make them take a force contested three one more time right here. So once they enter, you see that switch. So we get a bigger bodied player. 
not not one of their post guys, but it's another guard that can for, guard slash forward wing player that can take on this size a little bit better. And they stay disciplined. They make you take these tough type of shots. And this is Michigan State, number five team in the country offensively. They're actually a top four defensive team as well. They switch the screen. Now watch them dig in the post, and there they are. They're ready for you with double teams right here on the weak side. So you got this engaged defender, guy guard number 25. He's ready. He's ready. Boom, he goes. He walls up. He doesn't try to come over for the highlight play block shot. He just walls up, makes him shoot over. Here's the communication piece was talking about in the opening. You can see him pointing and talking. In these switches, what happens is offenses will then try to take advantage of switches, and sometimes that stagnates the offense, and it forces them to play at a slower pace. Shot clock gets down. You see they're trying to get it in there. Not able to. Now shot clock's under 10. They're going to have to operate a little bit quicker. Down under five. And there's where the length of the shot blocker comes over. This is where I'm talking about the competitiveness. They just really compete. They care a lot about making it hard on you. Look at the activity in the bubble. Look, they stay in the bubble. They're making dribbling, passing. There's resistance to everything. You get a switch. Make teams take contested shots, even in the paint area. Those are not easy finishes for really good players. Okay, now we're going against Gonzaga. Number one team in offensive efficiency. So this is as good as it gets. This is good on good or great on great here. Number one defense versus number one offense. One more time. Let's roll that back. So Gonzaga is going to play a little faster. They play at a, typically a faster pace. So you've got another mismatch in the post. But here's the communication. Now he number 11 here is telling him, I got him, I got him, switch. So as that's happening, because it's an early communication, he's, he's already in his closeout. He's able to get hands in there and contest that three. Again, look at the activity in the ball. They keep their, they stay in a stance. Look at the hands. Hands are trying to disrupt. They're running offense six, seven feet behind the three, using their length right here. The discipline not to foul. More players should watch this. Look at this. We're going to wall up. We got four arms up. We're going to make them finish through a double team. They're not able to do it. Really good discipline defense. Coach, you tired of making the same old mistakes? We've created a free webinar just for you. We're gonna share the three most common mistakes that coaches make and how to turn those mistakes into wins. So be sure to click the link and join us for this workshop. And in addition to that, you'll get a bonus preseason retreat guide that you can use with your team that our coach mentors use with their teams. So be sure to join us. Can't wait to see you on the other side. Love the scramble here. The competitive effort, the scramble that happens. So let's start right here. So now we got 25 here on defense. He's digging. Some call that skirmishing. We, we call that PGC where you skirmish at the ball. He's going to dig it out of the post. So on the pass, now we've got rotations happening. And they're not afraid. They will switch one through five. And here's their five man running out. Runs them off the three-point line. Now we're going to have to help up. We're in another scramble mode. we got to come off our guy. We're scrambling there. They make the one more. It's not a good pass. We've got to dig down low to catch it. And now we're up in the bubble. Look at this. We're up in the bubble. And if you're Texas Tech, you love that shot after getting a paint touch and make them take a really contested tough three. All right, now let's take a look. I wanted to show this clip as it's an extended 2-3 zone that they'll show. They'll show it in the half court. They'll extend here. 
just going to slow you down, make you walk it up. They'll fall back in what shows initially as a 2-3, but then they'll just match up out of it. They may get you running some zone offense, and then they're just going to match up. So it's another way to confuse the defense, take them out of rhythm, maybe cause some stagnation. These little effort plays, I'm going to roll this back. So I don't think you can emphasize this enough on effort, what I call an effort play right here. So as the ball goes into the wing, and right here as it's going to come back. So they want to get a little handoff. But because of 13's effort and to blow this hand up, excuse me, handoff up, it just makes it more difficult. So now instead of catching in scoring range, we're out here beyond the timeline, out of scoring range. We're making it more difficult. Now that ball screen has to happen further out. They love to force you in these baseline drives, and they love to help early. Now, they typically even help earlier and further out than this. They'll go another step, like, outside the lane line there. So it's a little late for them, and then they just force you into that late shot clock contested three. Again, as a defensive coach, you love contested late-in-the-clock threes. Now, average fan wouldn't see this right here. So on this post up, what you what I want you to see, 25 is digging again. They're skirmishing, they're stunting, they're giving the appearance that they're coming for a double team, which forces Gonzaga player here to back dribble. He's a little hesitant, then he finally makes his move. It just gives the on ball defender more time to play. And he does a good job of keeping those hands up and ultimately blocking the shot. Just going to show you a couple clips against Michigan. Michigan runs this open post, kind of five out. This is when John Beeline was there, known for really good offense, tough actions to guard. You just notice the hands on the closeout. Let's run it back one time. So they're going to enter in the post. You're going to see a couple backdoor cuts. Here's one. They keep body contact as their cutters get into the lane. We get a switch. There's that baseline drive that they do a good job of helping. So their def post defender's on the low side. So on the drive, he can just step out. He meets him early, and then he recovers. So a nice help and recovery. One more thing I li like to point out here is watch 11. He's coming in case we don't recover in time. And he kind of closes space right here. And then we get another switch and we're contesting pretty deep three. I think we'll show one more Michigan clip, second and final clip here. We're switching those little dribble handoffs. Look at the activity. Just getting them, getting them uncomfortable. Playing offense on defense. Another clean switch on the ball screen. Now they're going to try to work it in the post. And this is where they send help. So if they do get it in there, they got each other's back. I mean, the guards mismatch. We're going to converge on here. Use size to double. Ultimately force a block shot. And in that Michigan game, that was a historically low scoring output. Michigan scored 44 points. I think it was their lowest in the history of that program, which says a lot about Texas Tech defense. Let's move into the Michigan State game. Again, this is a number five off offensive efficiency team. Now, not great looking offense here at the start, but let's run it back. So they're showing a 2-3 zone, and this is what showing this can do. Michigan State's getting into a call. They're trying to set up. It's taking them a while. They're not used to Texas Tech plays a lot of man, so they're not used to playing zone offense. They finally make the first pass at 13 seconds. So by the time they, they get in the post, force the double, the double forces the kick out, and now we're taking a late, Three seconds on the shot clock, deep three. 
It's a little bit of a gamesmanship as as a coach there, quick Chris Beard. Go back to here we are in the Virginia National Championship game. Again, Virginia plays at a much slower pace, but they're very efficient on offense, especially this year, number two in the country. Love the activity there. They speed you up one more time here. Here they're showing this little soft pressure. They're just slowing you down. And then they're going to match up out of it. But they're very active in the bubble. In the bubble mean if you're close enough to that offensive player, you're in the bubble. And they just do a great job of being active in there, getting hands on balls, ultimately causing turnovers. All these clips are going to result in turnovers. I wanted to show you how they produce these turnovers. Again, getting in the bubble. Look at the activity. Look at the effort. You're forcing a big who's not as comfortable putting the ball on the floor because of the ball pressure, and you funnel them right into the charge. Now, not sure if this was a design trap up top. Doesn't seem like they would typically want to do that. Again, forcing the ball out of the post. They scramble and cause a travel. One more time on this. Now, Virginia's point guard here is not really a shooter, so you can get away a little bit with that trap up top. And then they scramble like they do so well. They just... They just keep playing hard. They scramble out. This is that communi communication piece. They're used to scrambling, flying around, just making you make the next play. They make you make the next play on defense. Again, they're just going to switch all these. Virginia ends up getting in the post, but those active hands causing more turnovers. All right, got to love the help the helper situation here with the effort. So right here, watch 13 here on the weak side. So once Virginia's point guard Clark gets to the paint, that ball is in the air, and he's going to close that space so fast with great effort, get a hand on it, and ultimately knocks it off the Virginia player. Look, they switch the dribble penetration. They stay with it. They're disciplined. He's going to stay grounded. He walls up. Just a really good job there on defense of playing disciplined basketball. Look at the ball pressure again in the bubble. Here's a bit of a scout. They are backing off the point guard for Virginia, who's pretty quick. They're playing off a little bit, but then they're pressure up on these other guys. And you just make them uncomfortable. This is DeAndre Hunter, top 10 pick in the draft. Turns it over. So there's a lot of reasons Texas Tech is really good on defense. I pointed out three of them, which is their competitive effort, which is different than playing hard. It's a whole nother level of competing and getting after it. And two, their communication. They communicate well, which you'd have to do when you're switching a lot, when you're scrambling, you're rotating. And then third, there's just high clarity on situational play. What do they do on, on baseline drives? What are we doing on ball screens? What are we doing on double teams? It's very clear that there's high clarity. When there's high clarity, players can play faster, they can play more free, and there's not as much thinking because they're instinctive and it's been drilled in and automated in their habits. Texas Tech 2019 defense, this is why they were historically great.